Now let's see what's making the weekend headlines where you are. Hello again. Now the ITV News in London. The family of a woman who died in a house fire in southeast London say she made a last desperate phone call to her husband before the line went dead. Firefighters were called Hamilton Road in Bexley Heath at around 8.30 on Thursday night. Ladders were used to pull the woman, her two children and their grandmother from the blaze, but all four were pronounced dead at the scene. The woman's brother managed to escape the burning building by jumping from a window. Five more people have been charged with murder following the shooting of a man in Haringey. Sharmaik Mohammed died in September after suffering multiple gunshot wounds when a man armed with a handgun emerged from a car in Green Lanes and opened fire. A man's critically ill in hospital with a head injury following a Queen's Park Rangers football match. The 52-year-old was found near the stadium in Shepherd's Bush last night after QPR's match against Luton Town. Police believe he may have been assaulted or caught up in disorder following the championship match. The National Lottery has teamed up with singer and actress Alexandra Burke to inspire Londoners to think about how they might use some of the millions of pounds raised for good causes each week. Some of London's best-loved attractions were funded with lottery money, including the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum and Kew Gardens. Anna Geary reports. An installation in Trafalgar Square, unveiled as the National Lottery, turns 27. Islington-born singer and actress Alexandra Burke was promoting the artwork, made up of 636 balls, to represent the 636,000 community groups supported by the organisation's funding. I wouldn't have been able to do what I do if it wasn't for the National Lottery. There's one place in particular, I'm from Islington, the Union Chapel, somewhere that I've loved performing and I've had the privilege of performing there. And I know that the National Lottery have helped fund that, as well as Royal Albert Hall. I was only there a couple of days ago and they helped with the refurbishment. It was the Festival of Remembrance that the X Factor winner was glad to be a part of. Now live music events have resumed. Last year, one in three jobs in the music industry were lost. Although the sector isn't as bleak as this now, Burke is urging aspiring creatives in London to apply for the lottery grants and says the arts is a means to help us process the pandemic. Well, music is the one thing that connects every single human on earth. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you come from, we all, we all have music that connects us all. And after a time where connection has been challenging with lockdowns keeping us apart, Burke hopes to inspire Londoners to follow in her footsteps. Anna Geary, ITV News. OK, now it's time to take a look at all the sport. For the love of the game eBay sponsors ITV Regional Sports Reports. Chelsea head coach Thomas Tuchel has praised his side for adapting to the demands of an early kickoff following the international break. They outclassed Leicester by three goals to nil at the King Power Stadium, extending their unbeaten run to nine matches in a row. Elsewhere, Arsenal are currently playing Liverpool in the day's late game, where the score there is currently nil-nil. And before we get the weather forecast, the most valuable man-made object in the world has arrived in London, all one-twentieth of a gram of it. Now, it's a rare postage stamp called the British Guiana One Cent Magenta. By weight, it's thought to be the most costly thing humans have ever produced, having sold at auction in America early this year for £6.3 million. Pounds. Well, its new British owner is the stamp dealer Stanley Gibbons, where it's currently on display in its shop in the Strand. Uh, so it's, it was owned by a man called Count Ferrari, who was the greatest stamp collector who ever lived and put together the, uh, the, the best collection ever formed. And more recently, it was owned by uh, John Dupont, um, who uh, was played by Steve Carell in the film Foxcatcher recently. Um, and he was actually convicted of murder while he owned it because he had a, a severe mental decline. 
Now it's time for the weather. Here's Chris Page. Feels like home, whatever the weather. Valent boilers and heat pumps. Sponsors ITV London Weekend Weather. Hello there. Very good evening to you. Today, across the whole capital and a lot of the country, actually, it's been very mild. And again, across much of England and Wales, there's been a lot of cloud cover today. And that's kept those temperatures above average for the time of year. But things are set to change this evening and overnight. This cold front slides southwards, brings some light rain. But it's behind that cold front we introduce brighter, colder air tomorrow. And it will stay cold as we go through the next few days and even turning colder from the middle of the week too. So through this evening and overnight, we've got a lot of cloud. There'll be some light outbreaks of rain for a time just after midnight, but that cold front clears the air through, clearer skies to tomorrow morning and a chilly start in the countryside. Temperatures could be close to freezing. So a touch of grass frost, but a much brighter start to the day. Lots of sunshine from the word go on Sunday. We will begin to see just a few showers drifting their way in from the North Sea into the afternoon. Now, some of those could be heavy with some hail in there too. They will be hit and miss though, but when we add on the strength of that northerly wind, it's going to feel more like three to four degrees Celsius. So a real change in type of weather as we go into tomorrow. Still with some sunshine this week, but turning colder into Wednesday too. Bye-bye. Valent. Sponsors ITV London Weekend Weather. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.